Hey everybody, it's Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. I'm off work today, I'm off work today. I'm off work today and I'm so excited. I'm out in my workshop this morning. It's cozy in here. I came out earlier this morning and turned my heaters on. I have this one and I have one over there that puts out more radiant heat. I've continued to make some changes in the workshop that get me more and more organized out here with more and more space. This shelf was just sitting out and I went ahead and attached it to the wall. Uh, it's got just a few odds and ends in it right now. One of these days we're going to talk about the little bunnies that I used to make. And uh, there's one that's finished and one that's unfinished. Unfortunately the entire shelf fell over the other day and a couple of the bunnies broke. But it's nice and warm out here. I have pulled one of my journals off the shelf that I would like to work in today. And we are going to come back over to that. I want to show you a few things. So this journal is set up a lot like the Poetic Rust journal that I did. And um, it's, it's traveling right now. It's, I will hopefully share more about that later. But I don't have that journal here or I would pull it out and show you. I did make another one though. The covers are just old book covers and I glued some fabric that I like in the front. This is a really um, textured fabric with the polka dots and looks like I might have gotten a little bit of ink there. Maybe from her and that's okay. You all know how I work. Um, usually accidents are happy accidents. But one of the things I'm going to do is go through here and stain some pages. In the last uh, video that I showed you, uh, someone has mentioned like staining the pages after a journal is already put together. And I love doing that. Now, if you have a journal that you're really worried about keeping the cover pristine and you don't want any ink to get anywhere, this might not be a, a good technique for working in that journal to stain pages. Um, you can also though take paper, you know, large sheets of paper to put on the insides of your front and back cover to protect them. I'm, I think I'm going to do that on this one because we've got that fabric. But again, I'm going to go through and do a little bit of staining. This journal is just cottage gar... gar <laughs> hello. This journal is just cottage garden colors. So that's mostly the colors I've pulled out. And let me get a few things. Uh, I have plans for this book. Let's get a few things um, out of the way. This is a plate that I've had for probably 10 years, more than 10 years, because I had it in the old house. And I used it like a palette to put, um, like a tray to put acrylic paint on when I was painting. Sometimes I do this with tea. Sometimes I do it with um, inks. And we're just gonna, let's see, I'm trying to figure out what opens up where. You can take a page and just brush it with water. This paper is really thick. I made this with uh, watercolor paper and mixed media paper so that I could really work on these pages and not have them fall apart. But you can come in, just put the ink pad on the page, and it leaves these beautiful spots. And then you can start running that ink all over the place. You can see how thick this paper is. You can also just, you know, I'm really hard on ink pads. I don't, I don't play with art supplies. I, I mean, I do play with them. What I mean is that I'm not, I mean business when I take out an ink pad. So, you know, just put the ink everywhere. I also don't mind if, you know, ink gets a little bit messy. Like that puts some dots on top of this. And to me, I just think, I love that. Now, I also keep close by this hair dryer to dry off pages if I need to. I might hit that one because the ink has um, beaded up. And if we go ahead and dry it, it's going to be a whole lot better than letting it sit there wet. This is one of the little stickers on this page that came from the Dollar Tree. And it just looks too new. It looks too new to me. So I'm going to come in here with some 
vintage photo and add that old color there. And so what if we, you know, make a mess on the sticker? I can tell you one of the reasons that I wanted this sticker was for the inspiration. And so, like, anytime you see something that you're impressed with, don't be afraid to try doing your own version. You know, I mean, you want to give credit where credit's due. Um, it, it's not a good feeling when someone takes something that you've made and says that they're the one who made it. So I do believe in giving full credit. And this, I don't know who the artist is. This came from the Dollar Tree. But I, anytime I see something that inspires me, I go ahead and put it on the art desk or somewhere where I can look at it again and like a see I, I should never have put that dot on her nose um, I wasn't paying enough attention but it's okay we can fix it and she needs to be smiling more and as we add I know that ink's gonna run so let's just go ahead and that kind of looks like water too, I think. So that's her hair all around there. And um, we'll just like kind of get rid of that, that dot. I think we can come back with some color and maybe fix the eyelashes a little bit. Do not be afraid to do artwork. Something else that will make this better is if we take some, I'm gonna use the dual brush pen. Let's see. And let's come in and add some. Some different colors in there. Is that the one? No, that's good. And that's really the only part of her skin that's showing. And we've still got, I didn't even clean this brush off, if you will notice. And what if we take some, let's take this ink pad, put a little bit of pink up here, and I'm not, I don't want to mess up this ink pad. That's one from Jennifer, so you notice I used some on just white paper. I'm going to go to my, um, my beautiful Neo Color 2s. These are also from Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. I love these so much. You know I do. And we're just going to put some different colors in here. And come out further with the hair. This the hair reminds me of Jane Davenport. So maybe I don't have enough hair here either. Right there. And then let's get some blue. And put blue here. And definitely some underwater. And you can see that this ink is just continu continuing to run. I'm okay with that. I'm just practicing. I think the more we practice, the better we get. We do need, I think, um, to outline that more. And then maybe a little color in the face would help make sure we know that that's... I wonder, can you tell that's a supposed to be a mermaid 
this should come right off. <laughs> Is that terrible that I did that? So, what we're going to do is just go ahead and let's get all kinds of blue out here for the water. And now that that little um, sticker is gone, and look, we have the silhouette over here. What we can do is come back in here with the uh, Distress ink. And let's see if it makes it lighter. If we can still see that outline in there. Maybe or maybe not. That's really dark, but that's okay. I do not have a problem with that. I'm going to take a piece of paper. We'll use this paper later for something else, but let's soak up. Ooh, interesting. Okay, more. I think we need purple in her hair. The little sand dollar was a sticker as well. I'm going to get the hair dryer out and I'll be right back. I put a little bit of pink glitter paste in her hair. We've added some more color. I did put some scales on her. We can keep adding color. This is just where I am right now. I've added some more water to this page. I put some white gesso to tone down the, um, the vintage photo color. And you know, to tie the pages in, I can come across onto this side and get on the edges here, maybe even just a tiny bit on the sand dollar. I took the sand dollar sticker off and kind of did my own thing. I do think, let's see, can we do that to make it look more real and then get some of this vintage color on this side. I need a different brush. And it's okay even if it gets on the fabric. That's I consider the fabric part of the page when I make a journal like this. Um, I, this fabric is kind of shiny in spots. Sometimes I use just a canvas or a cotton and I really like that. I'm going to take this. Okay, this is the blue in pool and I'm going to drop just a little bit of alcohol ink across the paper. That kind of ties it together too. Put some on this page as well. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more texture. <laughs> you would think since I just dried the page, but I wanted to get that bottom layer dry. I'm going to put some water here. There's already a little bit of water there. So let's um, put this down and get this beautiful pink. I'm going to just press that right on top of this little uh, stencil piece, and you see it gives us some color. Did that come through? Mm -hmm. And you can also uh, bring that on out further, just scrape the paint off of the top there, and it should give you some some messy stuff that you don't want on the page. So anything that doesn't work, just try it again. And you can see that this stamp pad's starting to get some different color on it, but that's okay. I feel like things, uh, let's try to get that blue off of there. It's making me think of under the sea. 
And this page would look totally different as well if I did not use these um, markers that run like they do. But I kind of like that. Um, not always, and I'm not always going to, you know, keep coming back to the roller balls. Right now it's just kind of, I like these cheap Dollar Tree pens that the ink runs and it kind of gives me a messy, a messy look. There, I need more color there. And then, of course, it's dried itself. I feel like you can never go wrong with some white. Right at the base of her, um, you know, the fin there, and then maybe the tiniest bit in her eyelashes. All right, for my journal entry today, I need to move the book for a second. We're going to take these papers out, put them. In here, that's where I sort of keep all of my scrap white paper, and even if that's a little damp, that color will get on the next page and the next page. And this, by the way, is one of my favorite, favorite things. This is a planter that had a beautiful orchid in it that Jason bought for me for my store when I had my retail store in the old railroad caboose. He was one of the biggest reasons that I had that shop. You know, he and my sister both encouraged me, do it. You, you want to do this, you've always wanted to do it, how will you know if you don't try? And uh, this orchid bloomed in that shop for a couple of years. I accidentally broke the planter and I just wasn't willing, something fell on it I think. I'm trying to remember exactly what happened, but I glued it back together and it makes me love it even more. <laughs> so I always keep this on my desk with my little pieces of paper in it. But for, for our journaling today, I'm gonna take I'm going to take three pieces of paper that are three different sizes. I don't want that red on there. And let's put all the straight edges together. So that's one, two, and then let's try to find a smaller one in here. Um, it would be fun too if it's all different kinds of paper. So let's get one more. and. What I'm going to do with this, so one of the things that makes a journal so fun is just how chunky and wonderful it gets as you add to it and work in it over time. Um, I'm going to take these three pieces of paper and I'm going to punch holes. Let's do one there and one there. And do I want to use brads or string? I kind of feel like I want to use some string or something. Let's go through here. And back through here. And I'm going to tie that. Let that hang right there for a minute. And what I'm going to do is come back with three colors, you know, to tie this in. On the first one, I think I want to get some some of the blue. This paper is pretty, um, uh, yeah, I remember what this paper does. It uh, soaks the ink up immediately and it doesn't really run like I want it to, but that's okay. We're just going to make it work. And then on the next page, which is a totally different kind of paper, let's get another color in the whole color scheme for today and get some of that on this page. And it's okay if it runs over a little bit. It's gonna give us that, I love to do that. You know, it's gonna give us the shape of the paper underneath. Then on this very top one, um, let's put some purple, or in the purple family, you know, 
You know what I'm saying. And let's try to run that before it completely dries with those lines. And again, I don't care if it runs over to the next page a little bit or even into other parts of the book. To me, that kind of ties a book together. All right, I turned the camera off for a little bit to do some finishing touches, and I wanted to come back and show you these, the two pages. I call it one page because it's really just, you know, a spread. Uh, I love, love, love the way it turned out. Over here, you can see that I added a couple of charms that tie in with the mermaid under the sea. I love the way the sand dollar turned out and I wrote under the sea in her hair. Now I did go back and add, let's get closer to her face. She is not perfect. I did make some mistakes where I placed her arm and you know, you can always come back and like scribbling, ink marks, um, white paint. You can really cover up a lot in an art journal by just going back and, I tell, and, and adding, you know, adding more. And I will tell you one thing that really for me makes a difference sometimes is taking a picture of my work and looking at the picture. I see things in the picture that I don't always see, you know, when I'm, when I'm in the middle of working on something. I ended up taking out the blue thread, putting some grommets in and adding this twine. And our little book, I stamped a flower. I said, I wish I could go visit all the gardens. And of course, that is coming from the mermaid. I hope you enjoyed this page and I hope it inspires you to try something. You know, don't be afraid to try new things. Don't be afraid to fail, actually. I'll see you really soon. Bye for now.